Hello and welcome to a new developer diary about our next DLC, Armour 3 Tanks. Its upcoming release marks the end of our current development roadmap and the culmination of over four years of support. So to mark this special occasion, we thought there's nothing better to do than roll out the big guns. So let's take a look at the new content and features of Tanks DLC. Although infantry gameplay is definitely the backbone of our sandbox, I think at heart, ARM has really been about that full combined arms package. Thanks to the support of our players, we've had the opportunity to really double down on our vehicle gameplay through free platform updates and our DLCs. We've always tried to introduce entirely new vehicle classes too. Our goal is to create a greater diversity of gameplay opportunities. And now it's, it's time to upgrade our armored ground vehicle experience. And of course, that includes one of the most iconic pieces of modern military hardware, tanks. With Tanks DLC, we didn't just want to expand our current lineup of vehicles, but we also wanted to provide more options to fight with or against armored vehicles. This means we'll be adding new armored vehicles, but also new anti-tank weapons, munitions and targeting methods. On top of that, we wanted to create a more immersive experience. We wanted players to experience what it feels like to be locked up in such a cramped metal container and how it feels to ride such a loud 50-ton metal beast with such explosive kind of firepower. If you consider the package as a whole, our goal was to make teamwork and tactics more rewarding. I think it's fair to say that here at Bohemia Interactive we have a special relationship with tanks, uh, so much so that we have our very own T-72 which sits in the back garden. Uh, she has her own nickname, her own social media account, so I guess if you're watching Edita, hello to you. Just like our DLC strategy so far, Arma 3 Tanks DLC delivers premium content, but there is also a free massive platform update which you get whether you own the package or not. In short, the new armored vehicles, mini campaign and showcase scenarios will be premium and all of the new platform features and updates are free. The real meat of this DLC are the three new armoured vehicles. Uh, so that includes a main battle tank, an armoured weapons carrier, and a wheeled armoured vehicle, which is known as a tank destroyer. So each of these vehicles come in several splendid variants, uh, which can be used to serve different needs. But of course, they're all available in different paint jobs and liveries. Also, our players are able to customise them with additional armour and camouflage nets. This DLC's most powerful and real tanks tank is the T-140 Angara main battle tank. The Angara is a licensed variant of an original Russian design and it's used by Arma 3 CZ faction. It's built to deliver maximum destruction while also providing the best kind of protection to its crew. The Angara's primary weapon is a new 125mm cannon which can fire three different kinds of ammunition and has a longer effective range compared to the cannon on most western tanks. Secondary weapons are a 7.62mm coaxial machine gun and a 12.7mm heavy machine gun. Aside from the regular T140, the Angara also comes in the T140K commander variant. This version replaces the heavy machine gun for a 30mm autocannon and is equipped with sensors to share target data with the rest of the platoon and company leadership. Despite its size, it's only slightly heavier than the T-100, which makes it faster and more agile than the heavier western tanks like the Slammer. They often say that the best anti-tank weapon on the battlefield is another tank and that certainly applies to the T-140. This is a steel monster on steroids. The AWC Nix, it's maybe not the first thing that comes to mind when you think about tanks. Compared to the Angara, it looks almost, well, cute. But make no mistake, this little guy packs a big punch. Originally of German engineering descent, the Nix was licensed and modified by the AAF faction. It comes in four distinct variants. Each variant has an armored jacket that's able to withstand 7.62 ammunition. 
the Nix's AT variant, the, the 301. This is equipped with medium range, infrared, fire and forget anti-tank missiles. The missiles can either be assigned a direct attack or top-down flight profile to target the weakest parts of enemy armor. Its main weapon is complemented by a 12.7mm heavy machine gun. The AA variant, the, the 302, this carries four missiles that have a range of several kilometers. It also has a 12.7mm heavy machine gun and this helps assist against aerial targets or to defend itself against ground threats. The recon variant, the 303, it's unarmed, but it has a radar and sensors, as well as an onboard laser designator. This means it's able to share target data with other ground or, or aerial units via the data link feature, and that's something that we introduced in a platform update in Jets DLC. Lastly, the, the 304, the autocannon variant. This is equipped with a 20mm dual-feed autocannon and a secondary 7.62 machine gun. The 304 is chiefly meant to be used against light armor and enemy infantry. Finally, we have an armoured vehicle used by NATO. Now, although it's technically not a tank, it's an armoured vehicle which is built to fight against them. The Rhino MGS has a 120mm cannon which can fire all kinds of standard rounds, but also the new Marek ATGM. This missile features both direct and top-down attack modes. The Rhino has its own laser spot tracker, and it's also connected to the data link. Again, this means it's able to lock onto targets that are picked up or painted by other forces like UAVs, scout helicopters, or recon infantry. The Rhino also has a secondary weapon in the form of a coaxial 338 machine gun. Now, this has a longer effective range, and it's even more lethal against infantry than the more common 7.62 ammunition. To make this an easy vehicle to transport, the Rhino's weight was kept relatively low. However, this does mean it also has relatively weak armor. On the flip side, the Rhino has far superior speed and range compared to other tracked vehicles. Besides the regular version, the Rhino also comes in the UP variant, uh, which features an additional remote 12.7mm heavy machine gun turret and an improved protection in the form of cage and ERA armor. Now this does add weight and limits the options for transport, but it also makes the UP variant well suited to military operations in urban terrain. All in all, this is a vehicle that requires both its brain and its brawn. To be operationally effective, it requires close communication with its crew, perhaps even more so than with standard main battle tanks. For the players who are interested in single player content, Tanks DLC also includes a mini campaign. It's called Altis Requiem and consists of three separate scenarios. In this mini-campaign, you play as an AAF tank commander on Altis. You essentially experience the opposite perspective of the NATO offensive in Arma 3's vanilla The East Wind campaign. At first, you get to command the new Nix to fight against FIA. Later, you are given the opportunity to use the Angara main battle tank to fight against both FIA and NATO. There are different endings depending on how you play and the mini-campaign should take a couple of hours to complete. Of course, we also wanted to give the Rhino a proper introduction. This is where the new single-player showcase Tank Destroyers comes in. In this scenario, you take part in an offensive by NATO as a crewman of the new Rhino MGS. This vehicle has a similar firepower to a main battle tank, but it's much more vulnerable. That means you need to adopt new tactics, which make use of the Rhino's speed and agility. You'll also get to make good use of the new Maruk missile, which you'll get as an effective instrument against moving targets. Overall, it makes for a fun showcase of the tank destroyer. Tank DLC also brings along with it a major platform update, and that means new features and new content for everyone that owns Armor 3. We'll make some significant changes to the experience of operating an armored vehicle, such as a tank. These changes apply to all of the armored vehicles in Arma 3, so not just the new ones, and they make using these vehicles much more immersive and interesting. The most visible upgrades are the fully 3D modeled interiors, with multifunctional displays and camera feeds for crew members. We're proud to finally bring armored vehicles in line with other vehicle classes in Arma 3. It makes for a much more immersive experience. You now really get a sense of what it feels like to be in such a narrow and confined space. Oh, we've also made some improvements to the handling of armored vehicles. 
This is actually a feature that we introduced with the TACOPS mission pack, but of course it's something that is going to benefit the new vehicles as well. We wanted the vehicles to feel more natural to drive, to communicate the feeling of weight and power that these vehicles really have. So to do that, we started with a physics update. Um, so that means better wheel collision simulation and improvements to how different surfaces affect handling, together with suspension and gearbox changes. Plus, our community content creators, well, they now have a few more settings which they can use for their own vehicles too. Another thing we did was to change the damage model of armored vehicles. Armor now reacts more realistically to incoming rounds. For example, cage armor really helps to defend against RPGs, but they will only work for so long. It adds another variable to the rock, paper, scissors gameplay. We're also improving the audio of tanks. This involves updating sound samples to be played in stereo, positional sounds, and have more distinct audio cues for gearbox and RPM changes. Altogether, it should make the experience more lifelike. Well, we're also introducing new options for customizing your vehicles. So this differs per vehicle, but you can imagine things like additional armor protection or camo nets for better concealment. Tanks are some of the most advanced war machines on the battlefield. For this reason, our dev team added a couple of new targeting features. One of these features was already added as part of the JETS DLC. It's called Fire Control System, or FCS in short. This technology significantly increases your chances of a first round hit. With one click, the system will measure the range and speed of your target and adjust your weapon's zeroing and calculate the lead. It can be used for targets that are either static or moving in a predictable pattern. On top of that, we're introducing new missile flight profiles and capabilities. This includes using missiles in direct or top-down attack mode, a terrain-following mode and the ability to lock on after launch. A direct flight profile hits the target as you aim it, which means it typically hits the side. This is often useful against soft ground targets or low-flying aircraft at close range. A top-down attack missile is preferred against main battle tanks, as it will target their less protected roofs and hit them from above. The platform update also adds new anti-tank launchers, along with a few AT variants of existing vehicles like the ones from the Apex expansion. We have two new rocket launchers that can be used to take down tanks. First up, this CSAT's Verona. This is a manually guided missile launcher, and that means you can adjust its trajectory and target after firing. The other new launcher is the Moors MK4, and that comes in several different versions. The older Mod Zero is used by the AAF and FIA the newer Mod 1 version is used by NATO. We're also making some of our existing vehicles more anti-tank capable. The off-road now comes in a variant with a specially mounted launcher. And alongside that, we have our two light strike vehicles, the Prowler and the Keelan, and these will have AT variants as a special bonus to Armour 3 Apex owners. Our playable content team went the extra mile and created multiplayer mode called the Vanguard. The basic premise of this mode is that there is a device being parachuted and there are three opposing sides that need to find the device and transport it back to their base. The drop location of the device is unknown at first, but at some point players will get to see the area indicated on the map. This circle marker will gradually get smaller and become more accurate once the device reaches the ground. To win, one of the three teams will need to pick up and return the device to their base within a certain time limit. Another way to win is by simply eliminating the other teams in combat. Our art studio in Thailand has created lots of new decorative objects. We have new tank barricades, spare parts and tools, and even a fully functional repair depot. This depot can be used to repair damaged vehicles. I personally think these turned out great with lots of cool little details and I'm certain that the scenario creators from our community will be able to make good use of these. As you can see, Tanks DLC is shaping up to bring some splendid new gameplay to Armour 3. 
and it's been an epic journey getting here, more than four years since its original release back in September 2013. After more than 78 main branch game updates and nine DLC packs including one major expansion, Armour 3 is now a very different animal, and we can't wait to get Tank DLC into your hands very soon. So we hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.